evening of the 16th of April 2021 across the West Pacific and including in the Philippines where we are tracking Typhoon Sergei, also known as Bising here in the Philippines now that it has entered the Philippine area of responsibility. Storm system has absolutely been ranking the island of Palau with these winds gusting up at over 100 kilometers per hour. Widespread power outages have been reported there. So this storm, no joke out there by the way, and even over towards Yapa as well. It really, it's hard to find those islands actually right there. That's Palau, actually. You can see the convection. So good news, it is starting to pull away a bit from them. But if we take a look ahead in the forecast, there is still some questions to be had here. Actually, right now, the track is rather uncertain. Eastern Samar and Eastern Luzon, the threat is increasing for you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You got to continue to check in with the official agencies, but as I'm going to show you in a second, the official agencies still are pulling this storm system east of the Philippines, but a lot of the guidance and my personal analysis, having done this for upwards of about 15 years, is the fact that this is going to be getting very, very close to the Philippines, if not a landfall. Let's take a look at the intensity right now, and then I'll talk about the forecast. All right, so Typhoon Sergei. Inner eye wall really developing up here. This storm system is increasing in intensity. There's no joke. There's no. There's no question about it. That eye wall actually pulling away from Plow. You can see right there. Winds right now estimated according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, 148 gusting to 185 kilometers per hour. Pressure now down to 965 hecto pascals. Here's the official track from Pagasa. I've been saying it for the past week. Watch the western side the western flank of that cone of air because this is actually close to where I think this track is eventually going to go. This is a track from the JTWC, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center as well. Watch that western flank. But I do want to stress the official forecast still keeps it offshore. So I don't want to sound like an alarmist because I always want to relay what those official agencies are saying. These are the ones that you rely on. They are ultimately held responsible for these forecasts. Now, this is a thing from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, though. Numerical model guidance is diverging in beyond 120 hours, lending to low confidence in the extended forecast. They bury this in part C of their prognostic discussion. So this is basically their caveat. I, I lead with the caveat. They put it here and I really appreciate that. This is just kind of a general discussion of their confidence in the extended forecast. And they're saying it is low, but why is it low? Well, let's talk about it. Here's the thing. Timing of the recurve could drastically change the impacts on these coastal areas. This is the thing I've been talking about in my updates for the last week. We've been talking about the timing of the recurve. If that recurve is further towards the east, my goodness, eastern areas of Luzon, it's going to be a breezy, ultimately partly cloudy day out here. Eastern Samar will get rainfall eventually, likely heading into Tuesday over through Wednesday. You're going to see the showers. There's no, you probably will go into signal force warnings too. I, Eastern Samar, Southeastern Luzon, Legazpi, Canton Duanas, you are going to go in signal force warnings. One, but it could be as high as two or three. Actually, that's something I've seen at one of the Pagasa forecasters out there saying that, you know, you could probably go up to about a two or three here. But if this shifts further towards the west, it's because our storm system is ultimately gaining strength. And when it gets stronger, it basically acts as kind of a bulldozer running into this area of high pressure. And it runs right into it, kind of weakens it, deteriorates it. And we could see this track further west and then eventually recurve after this moves onshore over Luzon. In that scenario, we're going to be looking at much worse weather out here. It is a it is a 180 degree change in the forecast, a only about 100 to 200 kilometer difference in the eventual track, but a big change in the eventual impacts with tropical storm and typhoon strength conditions possible in that polygon area with that westward track. This is the ECMWF by Wednesday morning. Yeah, here's the coastline of Luzon right there, Manila right there. That's where our track is and actually brings it kind of right like that and eventually turns it towards the north. I'm gonna show you different guidance. That's the ECMWF. Let's pull that out of the way. Let's take a look at GFS. GFS actually keeps it just off the east coast of Luzon, but the Sierra Madre Mountains and really that entire area Heavy rainfall, gusty conditions, typhoon strength gust along the immediate coast. And this is after it would impact Catan Duanas. Catan Duanas, by the way, you're you're going to get you're going to get hit by this storm. I if you got any friends, family out here, I, my goodness, I remember last year with Goni, you got absolutely raked. Uh, I'm not saying that that's going to happen here, but you really need to be making those preparations now. 
as well. So here's the, the ultimate thing. ECMWF, that model has been the westward leaning one the entire time of this forecast, but now it is leaning further west than it has at any point. The ensemble as well. I mean, you only got one or two ensemble members here that pull it closer to what the official forecast is showing. Then you got our GFS where it has multiple ensemble members pulling closer to the official forecast, but look at the ones splintering off on this westward projection because it's not really hooking with that passing trough and it's running into that high pressure and then eventually pulling towards north. I'm kind of set on that middle line right along the coastal areas impacting eastern Luzon, not completely bringing you out of that cone of air at all or out of the impact zone, I should say, at all. So here's the deal. By the way, if you want to help me out on Patreon, make these videos that much better, I'll put a link down below. Uh, it, it, it really owes only about 2 to $10 a month. We're going to get some great graphics to help make these videos that much better. But here's the deal. I don't want to linger on the Patreon thing too much because I really want you guys to kind of take the, the vital information away from this. Uh, Eastern Samar, Captain Duanas, Southeastern Luzon, uh, you need to be making preparations now. And I know the official track still keeps it offshore, but the outer rain bands are at least going to impact you. I do anticipate that westward lean on the forecast here as well as we go ahead over the course of the next 24 hours. Uh, I would continue to check back in with JTWC and Pegasa. JMA, those official agencies, to see what they say. I could be out to lunch here, and I could just be kind of jumping a little bit too early, but I want to give you guys an early heads up and kind of just show you what I'm talking about, what I'm seeing here, compared to what uh, the actual forecast is. So you want to continue to check back in. I will hopefully have another update, maybe about 12 hours from now. Keep you guys posted. So, um, yeah, check out our Patreon if you want to. Please subscribe. Follow me on these social media platforms. On top of that, I'll also post some updates there. Stay safe out there. And as always, thanks for watching.